guys, thanks for coming to another video, video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and here today with Les Winner of Polaris Logistics at the Fairfax Rod and Gun Club 2-Gun Action Challenge match, where today we're doing a Halloween shotgun base match. And I'm here with my Elbonian Mossberg 500 contract, complete with Picatinny rail that totally obscures my setting system. Uh, so I feel like I should do pretty well today. How do you think, Les? Uh, with a setup like that, there's no way you can lose. I, I totally agree. And how, how are you feeling about the, the match today, Les? I'm super excited about the match today. I'm using a Mossberg 590 in the configuration the Marine Corps issues it. So while in theory, on paper, I should be able to outperform you, the reality is your system is so epically better than mine that if I can even stay anywhere close to you in the rankings, it'll be good luck. Yeah, really, you have no chance against me. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, we look forward to shooting the match today. Ready. All right, on this stage, you have to engage this Texas Star with your handgun. In this case, my handgun is an FNS 40 in 40 second lesson. Once you get the Texas Star, you drop your mag, or in this case, we're the mag out. This one didn't want to drop it, which is unusual for a pistol. You can get that popper and hold it back up. Probably the one time our M12 holster is not an advantage. Then you retrieve your shotgun from uh, the trunk. Your ammo is in the ammo can you had to bring from the front seat. And I'm fumbling a little bit there, although it's not obvious on camera. But I get all the rounds I think I'm going to need into the gun. Which is a slow, time-consuming process when you don't practice. So that's the hint here. Practice. And the durables go flying. I even get lucky there, I'll leave fish here on camera. Four shots to get five durables knocked over. Boom, and then launch the play, and knocking the, uh, got me the bonus. I am ready. Stand by. There we go. I'm low, right? Time, 9804. No bonus. All right, so how'd that first stage go for you, Les? Uh, it went pretty solid. I wish it had been a little faster, but you know, not bad. Now, for those of you who didn't see the first stage already, the first stage was starting with an empty shotgun staged in the trunk of your car with an ammo can full of all the shells that you would use for the entire stage in the front seat of the car passenger side, where you start with a loaded pistol. You then clear a Texas Star, Drop your magazine and make one high value target on a pepper popper holster. Go retrieve your shotgun with the ammo can full of shotgun rounds and eliminate five yellow balls, uh, yellow plastic balls from a standing position and then engage a pepper popper, which then launches a clay. If you score the clay, you score a 10 second bonus, which you managed to do, I believe, plus. I did collect that bonus. I unfortunately was not able to make that bonus. Uh, and that was in no small part to the Albonian shotgun that I was using because I really don't have a sight picture on that shotgun. 
It would seem the advantage of the mil-spec Marine Corps M590 with its proper dose string sights did give me an advantage over your old boniness. Now, you did fairly well on the pistol round. It, I did. On the pistol portion of that stage. I, unfortunately, did not. And uh, the back-to-back -back World War champion 1911 here uh, seems to be failing me uh, ever so slightly. Uh, now, that's really on my own because uh, the last time I shot this pistol, the rear sight actually came loose. This is a Cimarron uh, copy of a 1911. And uh, the rear sight came loose. I drifted it back into place and uh, readjusted the dovetail, but didn't actually verify whether or not my sights were on target. So uh, I'm consistently centered, but shooting low. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see if the little brass wedge that I put in the back of the iron sights has anything to do with that later in the workshop. But uh, yeah, I, I did okay. You did much better than I did. All right, Shooter, are you ready? All right, this stage just ready. required you to and do I... the Iron Cross. So a total of 14 shotguns required. And the ghost ring sights here on my 590 were nice and made this stage fairly easy. Except for here, where I like self-induced a malfunction. Because I had racked the slide back, but not forward before started the moving, that popped around off the lifter and into the double feed. And here I just had butterfingers just trying to load my gun, as you can see there. <laughs> And loading in two final shots to get the last of the shotgun. This was designed to be a reloading. And then switch over here. Uh, you had to do uh, the right hand target, right hand only, left hand target, left hand only. And uh, did fairly okay with this. This is where I'm doing my dot torture practice and my training session it really comes in handy. Three, four, five. Seven, one, nine, five. Alright, now we take a look at Jan Malcolm's run here. The Albonia shotgun seems to be performing here, even though it has its somewhat non-conventional sighting system. And already into the reloading, because it does not have the extended capacity as my M590. but not self-inducing malfunctions kind of helps him out here. <laughs> but the fumbled reload, uh, at least I know I have good company. And getting those final hits, then here he did something very smart. He used the Wilson Combat Magazine, and he put one in the pipe. So he had nine shots, so he really helped himself out here. And a good strong hand uh, showing didn't hurt either. Somewhat glacial reload here is not helping. And so then we came to this second stage here, which is uh, basically an iron cross drill. <laughs> more or less. Yeah, we start in uh, one position, moving to the center, then left, then center, right, center, forward, uh, all with shotgun, two hits on two separate steel targets, dropping our shotgun and engaging with five hits right hand only and five hits left hand only on the right and left targets respectively. And I feel like I did all right on that stage. How do you feel about that stage, Lex? I could have done better, but I self-induced two malfunctions. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw a couple of your your shotgun shells going going into the into the ether, and it always astounds me the number of people who comment about the reliability of a pump action shotgun and the, how they can do no wrong and can cause no malfunction. And this was a primary example how it could because I racked it back, 
and moved to the next position with it in the back position, which caused the loading gate to pop the next shell out. And it tried to have a double feed between two, so I had to clear that out. And basically, I went and repeated that again <laughs> later on during the reload drill. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, definitely a user-induced thing, but the fact that the user error can happen at all just speaks to the, uh, the, the, how some shotguns can be uh, quite finicky, even though even the military spec ones. Yeah, um, very sensitive to user. Reliable, but the, the user can cause more problems than yes, he realizes. And, yeah, that's what I mean. Very sensitive to user input. Well, we're going on to stage three for the day, uh, which I believe is stage one in the actual parlance of how the stage of how the match is made up today, and we'll see you on the next stage. Shooter, All right, this stage Ready. was a Stand quick by. one, and what you had to do is you had to hit the orange clays, which were uh, in targets, the black clays with no shoots. On this last one here, I did hit it, put a nice 40 caliber hole in it, so that counted. Uh, here's where the M12 kind of worked against me. Usually it's a spectacular holster, but uh, a little slow on the unholstering and reholstering. Didn't help me with my overall time, as you'll see here at the end. Uh, then you had to start an unloaded shotgun, so I decided to load everything right from the side saddle. I needed six hits. I had it six rounds. It just made sense. It hits me fairly quickly. Awkward shooting position here, but it had no effect on the hits. Four eight six zero. All clear. Cool. All right, now Jam McCollum did not have the best of stages here. First of all, the uh, less than optimal sighting system on his 1911 did not serve him well here. But he did get through it in one magazine. The real problem starts with the shotgun. Now, he got the orange clays. The black clays were no shoots and carried penalties with you hit, hitting them. And they were for the pistol only. However, once his Elbonian standard Mossberg 500 here is gassed up and ready to go, he immediately shoots two no shoot targets, collecting a penalty on each. Then he blasts the Duramex balls and gets a procedural from the wrong position and then has to go back and lose more time here uh, getting the uh, last two and of course getting the respective scores as you see. So we're back here at what is stage five for the stage uh, for the match overall, our third stage of the day. And I royally jacked that one up, Les, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you had a little trouble with target identification. <laughs> so at the end, what the course of fire was, is you see uh, to our right here, three sets of three targets, one orange in the middle and flanked by two black. The blacks are no shoots. We were to engage these targets with our pistols, transition uh, from the shooter, transition to the shotgun, move to the barricade, and engage in six the Duramax balls, from around the barricade with our shotguns. I cleared the center clays and then stupidly and idiotically and moronically engaged the final two no shoots thinking that they were the yellow Duramax balls with my shotgun and almost missed the last two sets of Duramax balls because I knew in my head that it was six total and I had loaded six and I had shot six so I thought I must be done. But it wasn't to be. <laughs> Well, I had a slightly better run in the fact that I took no penalties. My pistol accuracy is not as good as it should have been. And just not using this shotgun for a while, I have forgotten the manual of arms and my loading of that gun was glacially slow. <laughs> now, I thought you did fairly well for that, honestly. Um, all right, so we're on to uh, stage one overall, our fourth stage of the day, and we'll see you on the next stage. All right, so this one starts out at the buzzer. You dash forward with the uh, Buster uh, Simulator, which is a bag full of brass, but it's supposed to be your faithful puppy. You run up, reset the target, single load your shotgun, get your hit, make another track down, reset your target. Get your hit.
bring your simulated file, hoping your target doesn't fall down because that did happen to a few shooters and they had to make the run extra. Get your hit, then get frustrated because it doesn't go down even though you hit the damn thing. Hit it again. Then you had an array of eight fairly small plates, which you go ahead and engage with your pistol. And this went fairly well for me. Got it all within one magazine with rounds to spare, which is always a nice thing. All right, so Jan Makalom here gives his chance. And he gets off to a good start here carrying Buster the Simulated Dog down to reset the target. And is maintaining a fairly decent pace doing this. And the Albonio Standard uh, Mossberg 500 is getting the job done here even though it has a less than optimal sighting system. And the target goes down again. Final run here. None too gently putting our simulated dog down. Hopefully he landed on all four. And Albonia comes through, or I think the real sabotage that Al Albonia did was here on the pistol. As earlier mentioned in the video, the sights were not quite set up correctly, and it's really given him some trouble right here. So we're one magazine down already. And another mistake he made is he came into this with only two magazines with eight targets to engage. So he couldn't even afford an extra round per target. And with the hits just not coming here, it just didn't work out perfectly and ended up taking all penalties for all these unengaged targets, hence for accounting the score that you see right there. All right, well, this is our fourth stage and it was less than optimal, I think we'll that, call it. I, will, I would call that one a dumpster oh, fire for me. Okay. Um, I started that stage by looking at my magazines, getting my magazines loaded, uh, and realizing I only had one of the gun and one in reserve, which for a 1911 is probably fewer than I need. Uh, but uh, according to all the 45 fanboys, you really only need seven anyway. Uh, so uh, when it came time to do the pistol stage, uh, the pistol portion of the stage, the description is you start behind the bag here, pick the bag up, run downhill or downrange, reset the pepper popper, bring the bag back and engage the pepper popper with your shotgun do that two more times and then once you've scored your third hit with the shotgun clear the plate racks uh the the plates on the stakes there anyway plate racks uh with your pistol uh there are eight total targets i got to the second one before i uh ran out of ammunition because my sighting system again on my 1911 back-to-back -back world war champion 45 acp god's caliber uh blessed be his name uh, has fa has failed me again which yeah. again probably probably more my fault than it is the gun's fault but i'm going to keep on ranting about it yeah more magazines is always better um this stage just everything went a little slower than i would have liked the running was not as fast as i would have liked for some reason my shells would just not go in the chamber uh correctly on the gun and when they would they wouldn't knock the damn popper over so that took a few more rounds than planned the pistol shooting actually went okay there were very few misses there um, but still an average time on an otherwise fun stage. Yeah, absolutely. And we are, and we're here. This is a more of a, a the, the shotgun matches are always more of a for fun match than they are uh, more serious for competitors because there just aren't that many serious shotgun matches out there. Absolutely. But, and we're on to our final stage of the day here, and we'll see you guys there. Do you understand the course fire? Unfortunately. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, on to the final stage here for the day for me, although it was stage two of the match. And you had to carry these two heavy bags of brass to the other side, and of course it had to fall over. Stay, and damn it! to gain extra time on what was starting off to be a great run. 
Then you had four clays on the left side of the bay that you had to get, one each from a different port. The ghost ring sights on the 590 really helped here. Made sure not to induce a malfunction like on a previous stage. Grab the bags. And then repeat over on the right side of the range by getting clay from each port for a total of four hits. Almost have a short stroke malfunction there. And this sets me up pretty good. The shotgun's empty. I lay it down right there. Wrong to the wrong, run to the wrong set of barrels, therefore adding extra unnecessary time to the stage. And then come over and drop one round in and get the hit to stop the clock. Didn't feel I had it in me to get the spinner over and it wasn't worth the squeeze. All right, and Jan McCollin finishes up his run here on stage two, our fifth stage of the match. I am ready. Efficient movement of the brass bags over to the other side of the range. Grabbing his Elbonia standard Mossberg 500. And then proceeds to engage the targets through the portholes. And then suddenly Jan remembers he's left-handed. Takes the opportunity to reload before engaging targets on this side. Moving the shotgun and then moving the bags back across the bay. <laughs> And begins the engagement and takes a procedural for using the same port twice. Turning the bags one more time. And then makes the decision to go after the spinner with a pistol that has sights that are out of zero. So a bold decision. The hit comes first right away. Gets a couple more. But then decides to make the call that it's just not going to happen. So we just completed the match here at the Fairfax Rod and Gun Club 2-Gun Action Challenge. And uh, what are your final thoughts here, Les? Uh, fun shotgun match. This just proves the old adage that uh, you got to practice with your weapons. Nobody practices with a shotgun. I know it showed with me. I know a few other people probably feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, spoiler alert, my name is not actually Ian McCollum, and I am nowhere close to being left-handed. Uh, so realistically, shooting this whole stage or whole, this whole match as much as I could left-handed was uh, was challenging to say the least. And I, I Bryce, had uh, had some serious problems with, especially like inducting reloads with my right hand and doing doing all that stuff. So you know, offhand manipulation is a, is a real thing there too. That's got practical real world effects. Other than just cosplaying as internet celebrities. Uh, and the other thing too is, if it's not your primary weapon system, the manual of arms of your shotgun is completely different than anything else you may use. And if you don't practice it, the results will show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that last stage uh, went very well for you, actually. Uh, with uh, you, you ended up not going for the spinner uh, bonus, which was. Uh, uh, this last stage was two VTAC barricades. Uh, you had to move uh, the bags back and forth between two sets of barrels uh, that were full of brass. They were maybe 20 pounds each. Uh, and as you go and clear, uh, move the bags once, clear one VTAC barricade, move the bags back, clear the second VTAC barricade, four shots uh, from four different ports. And uh, then you engage one final hit on the spinner and you can choose to engage and spin the spinner. Uh, if you want a 10 second bonus with your shotgun or a 30 second bonus with your pistol. Uh, most people, if they attempted it at all, went with the pistol.
Yeah, I decided that uh, when I got there, I could get that required hit very quickly by throwing one round in the shotgun, and then just the math in my head went off the moment I made that hit that, like, 10 second bonus, I couldn't reload to re-engage. It's all what happened back. Cost me 10 seconds. And for the pistol to get 30 seconds back on time, I reloaded aim and got it spun would probably take me 30 seconds. Yeah, my, my last shot, I think, before I started trying to, to shoot the spinner, I was at like 8.5 something or other. I ended up parring out at, uh, or I didn't par out, but I ended up finishing the stage at 100.01, uh, if my memory serves correctly. Uh, I made my first hit on the bottom plate of the spinner, but to make that hit, I found out just how off my sights are. I was aiming between the top of the circle on the bottom plate and the bottom bolt on the bottom plate. Um, so probably about 10, 15 inches high of where, where I'm supposed to be. Uh, but that's a problem for future me to take care of in the workshop. Uh, other than that, I did okay, except for uh, putting one in the same hole on that one VTAC barricade, or two in the same hole on that one VTAC barricade. Yeah, not a good choice of action. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, this, today, today was not my day for making stupid mistakes on that. But uh, other than that final stage, do you have any additional thoughts left? No, shotgun matches are fun. Uh, everybody should do them and get out and use that weapon system that you have, but you never touch.